Hello, book lovers, and welcome to Authors Love Bookstores, presented by A Mighty Blaze. I'm Joe Moldover, author of the novel Every Moment After, and I am your host for today. A Mighty Blaze is a volunteer effort of writers and creatives who love books and storytelling and authors and bookstores. We work to bring attention to these essential parts of our culture during COVID-19 and beyond. Authors Love Bookstores is a weekly online program held on Wednesdays. I host and produce this program in conjunction with fellow writer Kimberly Hensel Lawrence. Our goal is to highlight indie bookstores across the US and Canada to tell you what makes them so special and what you can do to support their continued survival. We do this by speaking with booksellers and with the authors who love and appreciate their stores. If you're watching us live on Facebook, feel free to post a question via a comment below the broadcast and we will get to as many as we possibly can. Today, I am thrilled to welcome author Hannah Mary McKinnon. Hi. Hello. Hannah is the author of the novel Sister Dear, a current Canadian fiction bestseller, yay, um, as well as Her Secret Son, The Neighbors, and Time After Time along with many short stories. Hannah also co-hosts the twice weekly live program, First Chapter Fun, in the Facebook group of the same name and on Instagram at, at First Chapter Fun, along with fellow author, Hank Felipe Ryan, a uh, fellow Bostonian. Uh, she is joining us today from her home outside Toronto. Hello, Hannah, it's so great to have you here with us. Hi, Joe, thank you for having me, I'm thrilled. Hannah is joining us to talk about one of her favorite independent bookstores, A Different Drummer, located in Burlington, Ontario. And also with us is Ian Elliott from A Different Drummer. Welcome, Ian. How are things in Burlington? Oh, uh, we're having a really gorgeous day here in Burlington. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been a, been a great day to, to go out and be at the bookstore. Um, with all the uh, all the precautions, we're all observing social distancing and, and masks, which are mandatory indoors in Ontario. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been having a great day, and it's got even greater now that it, uh, I have to have the honor of being part of your part of your part of your uh, part of your event. Well, Thank we're you. so happy. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. Um, just to begin, why don't you tell us a little bit about the community that you serve? Uh, tell us uh, where is Burlington? What's going on there? I think you're just outside of Toronto. Tell us a little bit about your yep. literary community. Oh, sure. Uh, Burlington is maybe about half an hour west of Toronto. Um, in fact, many people who work and make their make their careers uh, in, in Toronto live in Burlington, and, it, and it's a daily commute. Um, it's actually uh, quite quite a large territory that we we serve. I, I well, actually, I'm sure every bookstore does. But uh, it's a quite populous, uh, populous area here, uh, often referred to as the Golden Horseshoe, sort of extending ha Hamilton, Burlington, Oakville, where H Hannah is uh, is with us from today, Mississauga, and uh, and and Toronto as well. Um, it's uh, yeah, very very uh, very diverse community as well. Uh, we are a bookstore that uh, we're. Uh, I like to think that we uh, we do very well by all ages here from newborns uh, to uh, to you know people people in their later years um you know, people of all origins and uh we um yeah and uh, our clientele is made up not just of uh, of customers who who come in the store to shop but uh, we also do a lot of a uh, lot of institutional work and support the work of uh, work of educators and uh, um and uh, and professionals uh and um yeah, it's a, it's very much a blend of pretty much anything a book might be in use for today. We're we're involved in that. That's great, and you are in the bookstore itself is over forty five years old. Well, so in fact, a, yeah, go ahead, please. I, I'm sorry for speaking over yeah. you, but uh, um, yeah, uh, November fifteenth actually marks our fiftieth year in business, wow. and I have the uh, bookmark to prove it. Uh, this uh, this lovely item was prepared by uh, the original owner of the store, uh, Al Cummings. Uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a milestone and it's, uh, we've seen, uh, seen a lot of interesting things over the years, uh, met, uh, met many, many great authors and uh, yeah, we're, we love uh, still being here. 
That's great. Tell us, I mean, one thing that's special about independent bookstores uh, among many is that, that no two are exactly alike. Yeah. And, you know, we wish that we could be there with you today. Um, and um, can you tell us one unique fact or thing about your store? What would we experience if we were able to be there and walk in and walk around your store today? Well, um, part of what I, I feel is unique about Different Drummer, or at least unusual about Different Drummer, is, that, uh, is the architecture of the store. Uh, I'm actually up on the second level here, and I think behind me you can see the stairs going up to the third level. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it, it, uh, for most of its existence, this, well, at least up until 1975, the building we're in was, was a family home. With uh, with rooms and all the all the uh, all the amenities, and uh, it was refitted in the open concept style by uh, by Al and his partners ba back in the mid seventies, um, and it's uh, it one thing one thing I've discovered is that folks just naturally gravitate up the stairs. Uh, that's often a challenge for retailers is to get people to go up one level and see more, but. Uh, uh, that there, uh, th th there was an architect by the name of Tom Moore who created uh, created the space inside here, and I think he was. I th well, he's Tom's still with us, of course, but I think I think he's an absolute genius with with what he did with the the interior and the shelving and the, and the displays in our in our shop. Uh, and I'm lucky, and I wasn't around, of course, when all that originated. I'm lucky to have inherited it. But um, but I'd, I'd also say that. Um, I think what we uh, we try to achieve, or I, I think it mostly just happens naturally, is that it's a it's a space where people can lose themselves for a while, where uh, there's a, there's because of the because of the uh, the structure of the store and because of the range of uh, of books we have and because of the variety of stories that are told in in the pages all all over the store. Uh, I th think people can. It, it's almost there's a kind of zen that uh, that I like to see occurring where people do uh, do sort of forget uh, do sort of forget the outside world for for a moment and, and get engaged in uh, in some pre perhaps something larger than than all of we are and uh, yeah I think f finally that's uh, that's what I, I I'm most proud of about the shop. I love it. I love bookstores that are built in sort of old homes where there's sort of multiple levels and you can kind of go upstairs and find nooks and sort of, you know, little spots. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love, I love those kinds of spaces. Um, tell us what people are buying. I mean, this is obviously uh, a unique time and especially difficult time. Uh, tell us a little bit about what people seem to want uh, from, from their bookseller right now, where you are. Yeah. Um, well, uh, there was uh, there was that um, unprecedented time through May, I think, uh, through March through through May, where uh, people weren't weren't coming to see us uh, by necessity, and it was communication by telephone and by email. Um, I've never felt the emotional connection so strong with with customers as I did at that time. Um, just reaching out for reaching out for contact, uh, reaching out for for some for something to become engaged with. Um, I think not just entertainment, but uh, I, I would say in engagement with the with the world at large. Uh, that seemed to be happening through us. I, I just felt it was some uh, maybe a stage different from what uh, from what the, the normal flow of uh, flow of events at the bookshop during that time. It was uh, it was extremely busy, diff difficult to keep up with. Um, I was uh, fortunate to have my uh, my wife helping me through uh, through some of that with a, with a lot of the work. Uh, it was great to great to be even on even on a very limited basis with all the precautions. Great having folks in the shop again. We uh, we I didn't realize how much I missed that. It was uh, it was a very <laughs> very elevating to have uh, people be able to walk in the door. Uh, right. Even though they had to stay, you know, six to ten feet away from me, but that was uh, um, there's. Um, but in terms of what folks have been reading through this spell, um, this um, we've uh, well um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, probably the two books that uh, that people were most engaged with through the uh, through these times were uh, Hilary Mantel's uh, uh, The Mirror and the Light. Uh, and uh, and in, in nonfiction, we uh, that would have been 
Eric Larson's book, the, the, the Splendid in the Vial, uh, sort of a very important, very marvelous book, a really important contribution to Winston Churchill scholarship. Uh, there were uh, actually uh, Albert Camus' The Plague, of course, was, was, in, was in some demand for obvious reasons. Uh, there, uh, quite a, quite a number of books uh, were in uh, continue to be in great demand uh, concerning concerning uh, the unfortunate race race relations on this continent, including white fragility and the skin I am I'm in by about the skin we're in by Desmond Cole, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, fiction. Um, yeah, Emma Donahue's The Pull of the Stars, uh, uh, and. Um, yeah, a great deal of material, of course, uh, unsurprisingly, on uh, on the state of U.S. politics. Yeah, uh, and um, yeah, and uh, our, uh, uh, I'm just sort of groping at the moment for, but because it's been it has been very hectic these last uh, these last four or five months. But uh, yeah, we there's uh, yeah. It, um, we tend not to think in terms of bestsellers at Drummer because we do have such a diverse and sort of widespread uh, group of customers that, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's unusual for one title to stand out uh, bestseller style ahead ahead of the rest here. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But, um, but people do ask us for for our recommendations uh, quite quite often, and that's uh, that's how they we we do guide a lot of reading out there, and, uh, and that my, myself and my colleagues. So. Tell us a little bit about um, being a bookseller. In particular, what is your favorite thing about your job? I think it's a, as an author, it's a job that I oftentimes kind of fantasize about. But yeah, um, but should. tell me what yeah. you love about it. Yeah. Um, well, it uh, the way I see it, um, it's Christmas every day. <laughs> or perhaps I should be saying non-denominational non holiday with gifts every day. It, uh, <laughs> Um, it's, uh, there are surprises everywhere. Uh, what comes out of the box, what we're hearing about, about to be published, uh, the people who come through the door, what they're looking for, what projects they're involved in, uh, it's constantly renewed and refreshed. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, I, I think it's a, it's a, I, it's so fortunate to be able to make a living this way. Yeah, I love that. I You're love so it. grateful for the authors and their and their voices and their visions. So that's uh, that's that's how we roll. We uh, we live we live on their work. <laughs> yeah, Christmas every day it sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> Hannah, I want to turn to you for just a few moments and ask you a few questions. So, uh, I'm going to ask you a little bit about a different drummer, but before I do, I just sort of want to pause again to congratulate you on uh, on Sister Dear and. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you would just tell our audience just uh, what Sister Deer is about and about sure. the, um, the nice the nice recognition it's receiving. Sure. Well, here's 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 the cover, <laughs> which I take no no credit for because uh, I can barely manage a stick man. That's about it. Um, but the gorgeous cover was was designed by by a publisher. So, Sister Deer is a tale of of two sisters, half sisters who don't know that the other exists until one of them finds out, Eleanor, that she has this glamorous, successful, wealthy, sexy, intelligent half-sibling who is and has everything that Eleanor could only ever dream of. And so she decides to infiltrate her life without telling her they're related and may have ensued because it's a psychological thriller. <laughs> <laughs> So that that is the book, and it spent six weeks over the summer. It was released in May, and it spent six weeks on the Canadian fiction bestseller list, which was incredibly exciting, and for which I am so grateful. It's wonderful. I, I just wish to add, it was a different drummer books bestseller as well, and continues to be. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you, yeah. Ian. <laughs> know your local independent bookseller. Uh, that's fabulous. Congratulations. It's so great. Thank you. Um, now, you uh, selected a different drummer as your uh, favorite indie, and I wonder if you would just tell us a little bit about what you love so much about this bookstore. You mean other than Ian and the way he, ch he champions authors? I mean, um, feel free to sing his praises. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the one thing that, that struck me 
um, even before I was an author, I, I often, often heard about a different drum. And I don't, I don't live in, in Burlington. It's a little, little ways away. So I hadn't, hadn't been. And I can't remember the first time I went in there. But I remember as Ian, you know, the way he described it, walking in and, think, and, and walking up to him going, oh, look, it's a house. And oh, look, there's parking all around. This is brilliant because I could just dump the car and then go in and spend ages in there. And exactly as he explained it, the way it's set up on different levels, it has such a, a family feel, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't have, and, and there's nothing wrong with the, the, the big box stores either, but it's just, it, it's true. It's one of those shops you just walk in and then you can, I know my kids went up there and they disappeared upstairs. because I had a book launch there last year when things were normal and we did things in person, you know? Um, and it was, it, 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 Ian and the staff there are incredibly knowledgeable. It's just it's just such a friendly feel when you when you walk in. It, it's I know it's a house, so it's not really a cliche to say it feels like coming home. That's what it felt like to me. Um, it's so well laid out, so many different levels, interesting stuff that you can see artwork on the walls that that you can purchase too. Um, and it's just it just feels wonderful. It's a wonderful place to spend a few hours and find your next read because <laughs> you never leave with just one book oh. sure. <laughs> uh, you're making me want to be there um uh you mentioned a book launch you mentioned having your book launch there and ian you mentioned the authors that you've met um of course one really exciting thing about independent bookstores are the events and um i wonder if either one of you has a memory of an event at a different drummer that stands out in your mind as especially um, exciting or unusual or bizarre, because these can go sideways sometimes, or uh, a, a particular memory that you would want to share. I uh, remember yeah. for, for Her Secret Son, so that was last year's book, um, I had some, some food and stuff, and one of the items I found was a giant cannoli filled with mini cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> and that was epic and everyone loved it it was great it was great it was great um that was that was really really fun but i've done a number of events with with ian and he's he's spectacular the way he champions authors like like none other it's amazing That's i'm sure great. you have funny stories to tell ian i'm sure yeah i remember <laughs> you're live on air so uh but yeah tell tell us uh, tell, tell tell us at least one well, our, uh, our, our, our little bay of serenity here gets all disrupted when we have an event with Hannah because uh, she's so, um, so well known and so loved in the area that the building is just absolutely packed out with people and it's, oh, uh, thank you. it's, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really, really lovely and it's, uh, it's difficult to get a word in, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's always, it's a great, great time when, uh, when Hannah is here. And I've heard Hannah as a, as, a, as a panelist talking about the writer's art and, and about the industry. And she is extremely insightful, very, very, very lucid and, and marvelous to hear every single time. She's, a, she is of course, one of, one of, her, uh, one of her utter favorites. And she, uh, she's actually got a very skilled interviewer as well. And um, yeah, um, in terms of, um, yeah, it's, it, I, Maybe uh, maybe I have a selective memory. I can't really think of an en event that's gone uh, gone weird particularly. Uh, I can think of one that almost did. Um, we had an afternoon with Adam Gopnik, uh, who was uh, you know, um, I assume most of your your viewer your your listeners and viewers will know that he uh, he's uh, the esteemed New Yorker writer and he wrote From Paris to the Moon and and, and many other in, in really impressive books. Um, Adam uh, visited uh, for, for a Sunday afternoon and he was not feeling well. And he had a devil of a time getting here. Uh, I think it was happening during a Santa Claus parade in Toronto. So he was held up for hours trying to get through that. When he got here, he was quite understandably exhausted and I didn't think he was going to be able to go on. And uh, I, of course, said to him, there's no need to go through with it, Adam, honestly, you know, we'll, uh, the folks will understand. Um, and uh, he, he um, but um, he took a little bit of coffee, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of a, like a sweet treat and got up to the podium and 
he just came to came to life. Uh, he made made a few observations, and uh, he just kind of discovered himself and found himself in the zone. And he gave the one of the most marvelous presentations, where he spoke for about forty minutes. Uh, and he just um, kind of pinballed through a range of subjects, talking with great uh, great erudition about everything. He's such a range of reference. And um, yeah, it was it just proved to be a lovely afternoon, and that was that was uh, you know, I I knew he I knew he was a wonderful guy, but uh, yeah, that was um, yeah that was one of my favorite events, and that just really stands out as something that uh, nearly nearly didn't come off, and, and did because the author was uh, was fantastic. Uh, I would have loved to have heard him. Um, we have a couple of audience questions coming in for the two of you, um, Hannah. I will go to you first. Um, sure. This is a, a, uh, a classic writer's question. Um, what inspired you to become a writer and who has influenced you the most in your writing? Um, so what inspired me to become a writer was failure. Um, I started, I, when we moved to Canada in 2010, I started my own HR business. I was in IT recruitment before, had a very su successful career in that for a long, long time. And my business failed miserably. I mean, crash and burn, total destruction, no survivors, just bad. And I moped around a lot. And it was my husband actually who said, you know, this could be an opportunity for you to reevaluate what it is you really want to do. And after a lot of moping around still and soul searching and trying to figure out if I wanted to go back into the corporate life or what, I realized that I'd actually always had the dream to write. And I thought it was a pipe dream. I thought, you know, the statistics are against me, um, but I'm also extremely determined. <laughs> My mother would say stubborn. I call it determined. And that was what propelled me into, into the career. I was determined to write a book, to get an agent, to get a traditional, um, a traditional deal. And um, Sister Dear came out. The next one is done and written for next year. And I'm working on the one after that for 2022. So here we are <laughs> and in, ter in terms of influences there I mean there are, there are a number um, but I always mention Lisa Jewell and David Nichols because I've had long-standing love affairs with their books for for well decades in in the case of Lisa Jewell um, because she moved from the the lighter rom com -y type stuff in the late 90s to family dramas to suspense very deft move from one to the other, incredible. And David Nichols' dialogue is second to none. Um, and he writes these poignant, hilarious stories that are just such a treat. And he writes for TV as well, which could very well be why his dialogue is so brilliant. So I always mention that there are many, many others, but those two stand out for me. That's great. Um... Ian, uh, a couple questions for you. Um, so let me tee these up. Uh, first of all, sort of a concrete one. Um, how can re how can people buy from you? How could readers buy from a different drummer right now? Are you selling on? Are you doing online shopping on your website? Is it by phone? What is um, what what's uh, what's the best way to to make a purchase? Yeah, uh, one of this fall's projects is to is to set up an online store. We have the mechanism in place, so we, we just have to we just have to get a lot of work done and get uh, get the online store loaded. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry that facility isn't there yet, but it will it will be soon, folks. Um, but we're uh, we're here on the telephone, or if you want to email us at diffdrum@mac.com if there's a specific book uh, folks are looking for, or if they just want some recommendations. Um, and uh, we're, uh, we'd, uh, we'd be pleased to, to help however we can. That's great. And then second follow-up, uh, well, not really follow-up, but totally separate question for you. Um, as a Canadian bookseller, uh, do you make an effort to uh, prioritize or give a special uh, spotlight to Canadian authors and literature? Um, you know, that's not really been necessary uh, because uh, actually the, the it, we're finding that Canadian literature does sell itself, and we have some uh, marvelous, uh, you know, authors who uh, who in the '60s and '70s uh, they created a lot of international uh, the, the international acclaim for uh, 
for the Can Canadian letters. Um, and, uh, and, and now we have some powerful presses, uh, Knopf Canada, House of Anansi Press, Goose Lane Editions. Uh, we do, uh, and we do review everything they publish and uh, we stock pretty, pretty much everything they publish. Um, we have never sort of created uh, a separate sort of Can Canadian or Canadian section. It's, it's uh, never been necessary because, uh, you yeah, know, we, we find that uh, the works by Canadian authors, uh, uh, you know, don't, don't seem to require that. And uh, yeah, they've always been a mainstay of, uh, of how, we've, uh, how we've operated at different drummer books. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah, I'm gonna come back to you with a question, uh, audience mm -hmm. question. Um, about the difference between podcasting and writing uh, and how, um, how you experience those two endeavors and how they present different challenges and rewards for you. And by podcasting, you mean the stuff I do online, like first I think, chapter yeah, I, th I think the question must refer to first chapter fun. So, I, so yeah. you might want to say a couple of words about about um, about how that works, and also perhaps how people can join that group if they want to. Sure, jump off. sure, I'd love to. So, first chapter fun happens every Tuesday and Thursday. We've moved the time now. It used to be eleven thirty a.m. Eastern. It's now twelve thirty p.m. Eastern. Um, on the Facebook group, First Chapter Fun, on Instagram, First Chapter Fun, and new and improved since yesterday, also on Twitter. I was broadcasting on three platforms. That was fun. I had four devices going on because I needed to hold one up to show the book covers. So the idea basically is uh, it, came, it, it came to me in March when COVID was starting to, to really, really take hold in Canada. And I had a book coming out in May and with a number of friends, author friends, we were saying, well, how are we going to promote our books? What are we going to do? Everything's shifting. Everything's being cancelled. And I said half jokingly, well, why don't I read the first chapter of your book online? Thinking half a dozen people would agree and everyone else would tell me to, to stop being silly. And I read for 53 days in a row every day. And um, Hank Philippi Ryan, uh, I read her book, um, The Murder List, and she said, well, what are you doing in, in May? I'm scheduled to finish in May. I said, well, I, I can't do this every day. I'm supposed to be writing, you know. And she said, well, what if you had a partner? And we did this together. So that's how that happened. So we broadcast at 12.30, we go live, we read the first chapter of other people's books, not ours, but other people's books. And the whole idea is to, to support authors, publishers, independent bookstores, bookstores, just the whole libraries, the whole industry, um, and to connect viewers or readers with new to them books and authors. And we have a whole range of books. Uh, a lot of thrillers, of course, because that's what Hank and I write. But we've had sci-fi, we have um, rom-coms, we have um, historical fiction. We've even had some, uh, we had one middle grade so far. And it's an awful lot of fun. So, so come and join us on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. And, is it, and do people need to join the Facebook group to be able to... Yes, uh, they need to, to join the Facebook group. And all of the videos, so yesterday was episode 90, 90, and um, all of them are saved on IGTV and in, uh, in Facebook. They're all, they're all there. Um, but to the question about how is, how is that different, you know, First Chapter Fun has helped me. I already knew um, how important the first chapter is to grab a reader, but that really, really highlighted it. And, and the books we're reading from, they're so clever. They're so, they're so smart, the authors. And it's just an absolute joy to, to and my reading to be read list or to read list or whatever, TBR is absolutely out of control. <laughs> well, so you've read the first chapter of all these books. Now you have to go, you want to go back and read the rest of each book. Some I've read. So last week was um, Wendy Morker's Don't Look For Me, which just came out yesterday. And I had the pleasure of reading an arc a couple of months ago. So I'd read that one. And, and a lot of them I have read, but not, not all of them. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a big backlog. I need a pause time button just to pause time for about six months, get caught up and, and, and then go again. <laughs> oh, I know it, I know it. I feel the same way. Uh, Ian, question for you, uh, not as a bookseller, but as a reader. Uh, what are you reading right now? What have you been reading through the pandemic? What are you finding sort of um, 
speaks to you at a time like this, just as a reader? Um, well, I, uh, I've uh, read quite a bit of uh, Isabel Wilkerson's new book, Caste, which is, which is quite, quite stunning and quite, uh, uh, quite, uh, quite shocking and uh, really, uh, really insightful and quite, quite skillfully written. Uh, I very much enjoyed uh, Thomas King's Indians on Vacation. It was, uh, um, yeah, it was. Uh, that's a long, long anticipated uh, novel from Thomas King, and we had we had the pleasure of doing uh, doing online participating in an online event with uh, with Mr. King a few weeks ago. He's uh, a legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, boy, there's been, there's been so so much. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Helen Humphreys is is uh, is a writer I enjoy very much. Uh, her, uh, she's a very she's a very interesting stylist, very unostentatious, and uh, she deals with uh, her books tend to deal with uh, the marginalized, the downtrodden. Her her new uh, her new title, Rabbit Foot Bill, is very much uh, very much worth uh, checking out. We uh, we have copies here. That's a great. And of course, the books of Hannah Mary McKinnon too. Yeah, of course. It goes, it goes without saying. Uh, Hannah, I'm going to turn the question to you. So we just said that your TBR pile is sort of teetering on your bedside table. But um, is there anything that you uh, that you haven't mentioned that you've read that you would want maybe our online audience to? Uh, oh, yeah. I, actually, the, the two last books I got from a different drama, I have them here. Now, don't be shocked by the name, but this is a book by Hannah McKinnon. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I'm Hannah Mary McKinnon. This this lovely Hannah McKinnon, you can, probably can't see that, but she has she's American and has blonde straight hair. There so I always say dark hair, dark books. <laughs> right, right. So I've read all of her books and the view from here, I'm 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 oh not very far in, but it's absolutely gorgeous. She writes these beautiful um family stories. She's just wonderful. And I also got this book which is Black Girl Baking by Jarell uh, Guy. Guy, yes. And I hold this book entirely responsible for COVID-19 pounds. Uh, why, because uh, why? the recipes are delicious yeah, and I can't yeah. stop baking. Got it, so. got it, got it. <laughs> uh, um, Hannah, have you, have you ever been in touch with the other Hannah just to uh, let her know that, do you know each other? Yes, we, we've been, uh, we've, uh, uh, we haven't actually met in person yet, but we are on social media together and we've messaged and connected on Facebook. And it's really quite funny because sometimes people tag us incorrectly. So they'll say, well, H Hannah, I loved your book. I said, that's great, but it's not mine. It's not me, right, right. right. <laughs> I'll forward <laughs> this thank email. You. And it is great because she, she writes lovely, lovely stories. So that yeah. we hope to do an online event uh, or an in-person event when that's possible again together. That would be really fun. That's really funny. Believe it or not, there is another Moldover out there who uh, so, who, who pops up. He's a musician rather than a writer, but um, who, who sometimes get our lines crossed. So anyway, um, well, that is great. Uh, we are running down on time, unfortunately. So um, I just want to remind, Ian, I just want to remind our audience uh, that in terms of supporting a different drummer, the online shopping is not available. Um, oh, I guess, and I'll tie in one last question that's coming in to this, because uh, somebody wants to know if you can get signed books at a different drummer. Specifically, can you get Hannah signed books at a different drummer? Um, and then more broadly, um, people are walking in, curbside pickup. What's, what's, the, what's the deal right now? Okay. Uh, well, um, if uh, Ms. McK Ms. Uh, McKinnon is willing, we can certainly get uh, signed copies of, uh, of, the, of her books. Anytime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, right now, uh, yes, we do have the doors open. We have sort of abbreviated hours, 10 to 4 each day. Uh, masks are required. That's a, that's a matter of uh, law in our area. Uh, uh, we ask folks to sanitize. We're very careful with what's, what's been handled. Uh, and lots of cleaning going on, but still the store is, uh, the store is uh, opening, open. And uh, um, it, it, we are, uh, for folks who don't want to come in, we are certainly providing curbside uh, curbside pick up we can we can wrap up your book and and make it available outside the building for you um we're also delivering uh, home delivery I, I think i've been out to hannah's place a couple times <laughs> and uh um yeah and uh, if you're uh, out of town uh we can uh, we can certainly use canada post or another courier to get uh, to get books to you as well 
That's great. And I want to remind our online audience, uh, links are in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the live stream, but uh, it's differentdrummerbooks.ca uh, to head over to the site. Um, and in addition, uh, while you're at it, go to Hannah Mary McKinnon, Hera Mary McKinnon, not Hannah McKinnon, uh, <laughs> dot com. Uh, for updates, uh, to find out more about the best-selling Sister Deer, uh, as well as the two upcoming books, I think in 2021 and 2022, do I have that right? Yep, 25th of May is You Will Remember Me, and then that's next, next year, and 2022 does not yet have a title, but I'm having fun writing it. <laughs> Fabulous, that's so exciting, and hopefully we will be back doing in-person events and in-person book launches and uh and i will be able to visit and swing through a different drummer so thank you both so much for taking thank the time you. to be here today thank uh and thank, thank you to the online audience for joining us uh come back next wednesday for more with a mighty blazes authors love bookstores and until then stay well and keep reading thank you everybody